During this time, when Alcarin's troops were still pummeling Alaba, and the Kingdom of Asturias and Leon under King Alfonso II was fighting to consolidate its new conquests, for a short but remarkable period, Gasteiz shone brightly in the land of the Basques. Twelve centuries have already passed, but time need no longer be an obstacle. Join us to discover the striking setting revealed by the latest archaeological findings. Our story begins with the beating of a hammer. Blow upon blow, the consistent chiming beat must have brought a very special atmosphere to the village, quite different to other towns in the area which did not have a significant iron production centre. By the standards of the time, Gasteis was an industrial and commercial powerhouse. Gasteis metal industry supplied a regional market which depended greatly on farm tools for working the land. Sickles, plowshares and saddle fittings were the star products. Despite the poor roads, a constant stream of carts made its way to the town, laden with iron ore from the nearest mines on the slopes of Mount Corbea. Naturally, such an important production centre soon came under the sway of the local nobility. Close to the ironworks, archaeologists have found remains of a number of houses whose size suggests that they were home to the most powerful families. The oldest of these houses was built around a central courtyard and contained a number of service areas as well as the main dwelling. This dwelling consisted of a large ship-shaped house made from timber and clay, covering an area of around 150 square meters. It survived for around 100 years, until it was replaced by another, even more remarkable building, occupying a site of over 280 square meters. Built to a rectangular plan, for the first time stone was used in its construction. A stone base provided the building with added strength and durability. The alterations to the main house also affected the metalworking workshops, which, like the dwelling, were moved a few meters to the south, whilst the activity was limited to ironworking. And so, little by little, everything began to grow, and Gasteis consolidated its position as one of the main urban centers in the Basque region. To accommodate this growth, by around the year 1000, the current street plan of Via Suso was laid out, consisting of three paved streets, lined on either side by houses. However, the most radical change did not come until the beginning of the 12th century, when strong walls were built around Gasteis. The erection of this defensive enclosure further stimulated the economy. More and more people wanted to come and live in the city, and more and more nobles wanted to rule over those new inhabitants and reap the profits of their labors. Construction and metalwork boomed. Numerous forges set up on the street now known as Calle de las Escuelas, making bladed weapons. Indeed, the street became known as Rua de la Asteria, or Horn Street, because of the horns used for the handles of the knives. The pace of economic growth in Gasteis drove ever faster development, with new features being replaced by even newer ones. Gasteis was moving towards a new age. In just a few short minutes, we've covered four centuries of history. 400 years might seem like a long time, but in actual fact, this was just the beginning. Can you see those builders and masons? They're constructing a small church. 
And do you know what church it is? That's right. It's the first church of Santa Maria, the germ of today's cathedral. Ever since, it has left an indelible mark on the life of Castells. But that, well, that's another story. Thank you.